Singapore. When you mm. wake up, you sleep, you get up in the morning, and you you're alive. It is a miracle. Hallelujah. Yes. At times we say, Oh, God is not working on me, God is God is delaying, God is not doing this, but we have a life. So it is the first miracle in our lives that everyone should be appreciating. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I thank God for this opportunity. Amen. So we are, we are still on women, women, you know, the woman of purpose, the family issues. Uh, last week we talked about a lot of things and actually I've seen some of our, our brethren, I've seen some fruits. Amen. I've seen some fruits. So I thank God for that. Um, so today we're going to throw in something else. We're still on the same program and this is still also in, within, it's, it's just running within this program. And we're going to talk about uh, family planning, holiness and childbearing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. Because this has been an issue um, people have questions, people don't know what to do, it's, in, it's in the, within the church, we're in the church and people are even of the world, so what should be done, like holiness, so the topic of tonight is holiness and childbearing. Amen. Amen. Uh, yeah, Sister Chimwanya, I think if you don't mind, maybe you will change, the, you will change our topic for today. I see we had women adornment. Hallelujah. So we see the issue of uh, family planning, family control. You find the families are fighting today. The man is fighting them. Some men are not happy in their homes. You know, for us women, a woman can have like 30 children, 20 children. Praise the Lord. And then we want to see what does God say about family planning? Hallelujah. And us, because everything has to be equal before God and us, and we have to live happily, you know, in our marriages. And these children also, they have to be happy. They have to enjoy. We have to take care of them. So let's see uh, what does it mean? What do we have to do? Why people are doing family planning and what is required? What is the godly way of doing this family, you know, planning? planning family planning it means just control. You know, you can decide, okay, I want to have 10 children. Amen. Let's say like uh, today, Pastor Jeff, Pastor Jeff might decide, okay, I want to add on five on top of what I have, right? But in between, before this five, he had made, he had spaced the children. So the spacing of the children is also, is called family planning. So it depends, it doesn't matter how we do it, but everything has to be in the will of God. We have to be you know, because we are in holiness, everything has to be done in holiness. Let's see what it means by family control, family back control, or family planning. Praise the Lord. There are so many reasons why people decide to do family control, control family, control the number of children they want to have. There are some reasons. Praise the Lord. There's some reasons, some of the reasons it can be poverty. Someone, because I cannot afford to take care of many children. I cannot afford to take care of uh, five or 10 or six, but what I can afford according to my income is one child, praise the Lord. So someone can be poverty, it can be, uh, some people do it because they're lacking knowledge, they don't know because so-and-so did it. So say, okay, I also want to do it. So another is lack of knowledge. One is, can be poverty. Another can be lack of knowledge of God. Another one can be because of health reasons. Some people, let's say a woman, uh, every time she gives birth, she it's go through C-section. Praise the Lord. And then maybe she can be advised by the doctors. You know, you cannot have more than one. You cannot have another child. Health reasons. Or maybe there's some issues there's some sicknesses that cannot allow her to have more children so they can you know she can decide or oh, the doctors they can decide on that so another reason like it can be um like if family you say me and my husband will agree we're going to have this number of children because that's what we can afford praise the lord but even when we decide to do that 
everything has to be in the will of God. What does God say about it? Is it in the will of God? And what does God say about family? Praise the Lord. Let's see. Let's go to the book of uh, Psalms 127 and we'll read verse 3. Psalms 127 and we'll read verse 3. It says, Sister Shimwanya, you there? Psalms 127, verse 3. Children are the heritage of the Lord. Okay, 127 by 3. Hallelujah. Behold, children. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> Hallelujah. I didn't know my mic was muted. 127 oh. by 3, I read. Lo, children are inherited of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. Amen. Keep reading. Yeah, yeah, read another one. As I are ah, in the hand of a mighty man, so are children of the youth. Mm -hmm. Read Happy is yes, the I man know. that hath his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with the enemies in the gates. Hallelujah. Amen. So he said, children are the heritage of the Lord. So if I, let's say if, if I have one child, he said, they said here, uh, verse 5, happy is the man who has his quiver full of them. Hallelujah. Happy is the man who has his, let's say uh, the family has boys, the giant boys in the home. Hallelujah. The enemies will fear to come along this family. Happy is the, happy is the man who has his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but shall speak with their enemies in the gate. Praise the Lord. Um, Children are the heritage of the Lord. And in the book of Genesis, in the book of Genesis, when uh, Genesis, um, let's go to the book of Genesis 38, and we'll read verse 7. We, want, we just want to compare these two. Genesis 38. Oh. You want to read? Okay. No, first wait. Uh, let, go to Genesis chapter 1, verse 27 to 28. 27 to 28, I read. So God yes. created man in his own image. In the mm -hmm. image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Amen. Amen. So we see here, God said, uh, uh, Adam and Eve, be fruitful and replenish the earth. And we saw in Psalms, that it says, Children are the heritage of the Lord. Happy is the man that has his quiver full of them. So according to God, God is expecting us to be fruitful, to fill the earth. I don't know how, like up to how many, maybe 100. There are some men, they can have like 70, 60. We had a man here, he broke the record. He had 70 children. Hallelujah. So God is expecting us to explode, to have as many as we can. But according to, you know, depending on the situation we are living in, the time we are living in, praise the Lord, everything is becoming more expensive. At times, because of sicknesses, as we have said. So what should we do? Praise the Lord. We have seen so many family planning uh, methods. Some even Christians, there are some Christians that uh, involve themselves in evil, evil family planning methods without even thinking at the end, we, we start regretting, praise the Lord. So my, the, God wants us to have children, but God did not decide how many we should have, even though he said, uh, you know, have children, replenish, multiply, fill the earth. So does it mean that we should fill our houses with children? Praise the Lord, like a rabbit, you know? You know, a rabbit can have as many as you want. So does God mean that we should have, we just fill your house. 
that you don't have even where to step. So what should we do? Hallelujah. There's a lot of uh, different family planning methods people are using today. But some of them, we're still looking at the side of God and the side of our own side. So we have abstainers, whereby someone said, okay, uh, this particular period, we're not going to meet with my wife. I'm not going to meet with my husband. This abstainers, praise the Lord. Because when we talk about family planning, it's for married people. I'm not talking, it's not for anyone, because sex out, outside marriage is a sin. So we are talking about family planning, you know, it's for married people. So we have calendar, praise the Lord. Calendar, I've uh, seen like uh, you count the days, women count the days, they know that their days, okay, this time and this time I'm safe, this time and this time I'm not safe. So that is called calendar. Then we have implants and injections, where this has caused chaos. Many women are regretting because of this. They are putting things in their bodies, and then they are regretting their pain, sicknesses, pressure, blood pressure, blood pressure, a lot of things. Then we have pills. Other people take pills. Then we have use of condoms. Then we have abortion. People are doing abortion because they want to control the number of children. They want, I don't want to have children, so this child I will take out. That is murder. Praise the Lord. Then we have surgery. Some people try to do surgery. Women, after they can cut her tubes. A man, they can do surgery on his, on his pens. So on uh, it, this one, the surgery is uh, normal people. Many, many people use, they do a vasectomy. I think if you're familiar with it, it's called vasectomy. Hallelujah. So we have chemical method and many, many more. But what does God say? What should we do in this issue? Many people have questions, but they don't have answers. Others say God does not allow family planning, but should we allow uh, men and women of God to suffer? Should we fall into that and like, uh, okay, because God doesn't want me to have family planning, I'm going to keep on having children, 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 children at the end of that day. You don't have where to put them. You cannot take care of them. You cannot feed them. You cannot uh, take them to school. At the end of the day, children are suffering. They are everywhere. They start begging. They can't have enough education, good education. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So I want to just open this for now. What should be done? God wants us to have children. But what should be done? Because it has to... Everything has to be done in the will of God because we holiness, holiness and childbearing. Hallelujah. I will invite uh, Pastor Jeff. I'm sure he's, he's loaded about this issue. So God bless you, sir. Praise the Lord. Amen. There's a medical magazine um, which I read about a woman from Uganda. She had 42 children, and the man had to run away from her. The Lord commanded us to multiply, to be fruitful, and multiply. So, from the biblical point of view, you need to know... Um, 44, sir. Sorry? 44, 44. 44, praise the Lord. Yeah, Amen. still it's like um, it's a number that is not quite head of. There are some single mothers with 18. This one beats them all. So when people take measures upon their, themselves, it becomes they are still saying, God, you didn't do it well, so we must show you how we should have planned it. It comes back again. When you start telling God, how to do things is Adam and Eve lived, Adam lived upon 927 years. Remember, Adam was created as an old man, 30 something years old. And he lived 30 years alone in the garden before the woman was created. After three years, that's when they fell. So they had only five children, three boys and two girls. I want to show you something, the plan of God in the life. When you see 
that these people that you say a man had seven children, it is only now. Maybe it's only Abraham who came that far or King David and Solomon, of course. King Solomon. The rest you could see the range seven, eight, which was natural in number. But when the flesh came to rule in men, men started to say, ah, you can have another second life, you can have this. Many wanted to do it as a, a charitable um, exercise where I have got to take care of somebody or some families. They have to marry off a girl, a girl child, so that they can fend after the family. We had a case where one woman was 56 years younger than the man, which is an abomination. Which is a, these are things that work according to the principles of the Bible. One, polygamy is a sin in itself. If it was one wife getting those children, it, it is the will of God, which, like you said, Psalms 127, just three children are heritage of the Lord. So if children are heritage of the Lord, it means that God is betting prophet, he is betting, betting evangelists, pastors, teachers, apostles, servants of God. That is the will of God. Because we have heard so many women, people blame abortion only on women. Say no, most women, 90% are forced to do an abortion because the man is a married, because the man is a pastor who has committed this sin. Several of these sins have been committed in the church of God. Thank God by his grace, he said all those things will be brought out in the open. Nobody is going to end up in hell by mistake. So when we talk about family planning, like you said, abstinence, abstinence is just a medical term for staying away. So there are effective methods that people can look at with the help of the Holy Spirit. With the help of the Holy Spirit, but now the doctors have taken over as our Holy Spirit. We now go to the doctor and tell us what we should do. They put implants. Many people are suffering from this um, added gadget into their own body. Some, they delay, actually even the death when they remove it, it can delay even up to two years to refertilize. So these are the dangers of going ahead of God. So, like you say, there are some women who have got medical challenges. But remember, God is the one that created you. He is the God of all flesh. Anything that contains the flesh, go back to him. Remember, God is a spirit, so we must worship him in truth, in spirit and in truth. So if we have got a challenge that contains our body, I have heard of people whose uterus was removed, they gave birth and the doctor said, we don't know what is happening. He said, oh yes, there is a greater doctor than all the earthly doctors. When the Lord moves, he makes the impossible possible. So basically, I will come in and explain one or two things. I just wanted to open up um, the discussion broadly a little bit. When you talk about family planning, who plans the family? Is it us? Is it God? When we worry about food, he said, do not worry about what you are going to eat tomorrow or what you are going to feed on. If the birds of the sky, that, do, that doesn't go to work. They do not have pots, they do not have granaries, they are still eating. So, by the will of God, many are frustrating the plans of God in their life by introducing these measures. If it is God who had asked you to have seven children, to have ten children, out of this ten, probably you wanted to use six, but you frustrated them, you move on to the next person. The plans of God cannot be denied by men. We can only frustrate him. Not that he doesn't know, but because he wants to use us. 
He knows the end from the beginning. So my prayer is, as we engage, it's quite a very vast topic that needs also to be seen from the medical side of it. I do not want to go into biology. I wish um, Sao was here, Dr. Henry, he would have helped us on that part. So that we see from the Bible what is the proper way of addressing this issue. Because if the man is not working, he doesn't have a house. I know of one story which I was told, which is a real life story. A father with about eight children in a small less than 30, quadri- uh, 30 square meters. So when you see things like that, it brings immoral- immorality in the home as well. There's no more prejudice. So these are things that need to be planned. To say, okay, the Bible says, if you cannot provide for your family, you are worse than an infidel. So if these things are being mentioned by the Bible, then we need also to be aware to say, if the Bible is already condemning me as a person who is saying, if I cannot provide for my family, why is the Bible condemning when it's saying, when the same Bible is the one that is saying, go and fruitful and multiply. So we need to, we, we just need to um, use the wisdom of God to allow especially the Holy Spirit to lead us. I'll leave it in the meantime here so that uh, we we'll go into other Bible verses, Deuteronomy, Ephesians, Genesis, a bit of Ephesians so that we know, we know what the Bible teaches us to do. So, yeah, I'll leave it to the floor. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, sir. Let's go to the book of Genesis, uh, 20, verse 38, and we'll read from verse, um, we can read it from verse 1, Genesis 20, 38. Read up to, we're going to up to 10. I will I request Sister Ruthie, please, to read, if you're comfortable with the reading. Dada Ruthie. Okay, Sister Vivian. Sister Vivian. Okay, Sister Love, it. Genesis oh, chapter. Okay, Amen. 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 Okay, where do you want me to read? Genesis 38. Let's read from verse 1. Genesis 38. That's 8, 3. Yes, 38. Let's read from verse 1. Okay. And it came to pass at that time that Judah went down from his brethren and turned into a certain Adolamite, whose name was Hira. And Judah saw there a daughter of a certain Canaanite, whose name was Shua. And he took her and went in unto her three. And she conceived and bare a son, and called his name Er. Four. And she conceived again and bare a son, and called his name Onan. Five. And she yet again conceived and bare a son, and called his name Shelah. And he was at Chizik, where when she bare him six, and Judah took a wife for Er, his first son, his firstborn, whose name was Tama. Seven, and Er, Judah's firstborn, was wicked in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord slew him. Eight, and Judah said unto Anna, Go in unto thy brother's wife and marry her, and raise up seed to thy brother. Amen. She continued. Yeah, we're going to stop at 10. Okay. Nine. And Anna knew that the seed should not be his. And it came to pass when he when he went in unto his brother's wife, that he spilled it on the ground, lest that he should give seed to his brother. Ten. And the thing which he did displeased the Lord. Wherefore he slew him also. Amen. Amen. So we see here, this man here, the man Onan, he tried to, he tried to, you know, to control. He didn't want to have a child, 
Praise the Lord. He didn't want to have a child with his brother's wife. Why? Who knows what, what he was thinking in his heart. But the Bible said because he, he did that because he didn't want to have to raise a seed for his brother. Because he knew the child would not be his. Praise the Lord. So he decided to, to pour it on the ground. So that is one of the family planning people are using, which is wicked. Praise the Lord. I cannot say this is good or this is bad. So this is, we are just starting this topic today. We will continue by the help of the Holy Spirit. But this, the Bible says that what he did displeased the Lord. Hallelujah. And God slew him. God killed him because of what he did. Hallelujah. He killed. When it still look, it looks like him, he committed murder because this was going to be you know, a, a newborn. Hallelujah. And God was displeased. So what we say today, if we do family planning, but what does God say about family planning? To me, I think it's against God's will to do family planning, but still the couple can still, con can still consider this, can still talk to God, can still seek God's guidance about this matter. Praise the Lord. Because you cannot have children who, that you're not going to take care of. The children will be crying, they will be complaining, and it will also displease the Lord. Hallelujah. So all kinds of family planning. See, women, have, women are suffering today. That is where we have now, you see children, you see someone giving birth to a, ch to a child. Uh, one head is uh, like two heads sometimes. Or oh, one ear is off, one eye is off, the arm is, you know, it's all because of some methods of family planning we are trying to use. Especially like women are taking pills. Hallelujah. When we go to the book of First Corinthians, chapter 3, verse 16, it says, The body is a temple of God. Our bodies are a temple of God. Let's go there. First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. Sister Helen. First Corinthians three sixteen. I'm sorry, my Bible is not in English. Okay, Sister Lucy, Sister Lucy. Okay. God, which book? First Corinthians. Uh, First Corinthians three sixteen. First Corinthians three sixteen. Know ye not that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? Amen. Hallelujah. Know you know that your body is a temple. So when we get these uh, injections, when we get these uh, chemicals, when we get all those things we are putting in the temple of God, it defiles us. Hallelujah. It defiles the temple of God. Praise the Lord. Your body is a temple of God. Our body is a temple of God. Anything. Oh, let's go to 17. Go to 17. Amen. <clears throat> if any man defies the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy. Which temple you are. Amen. Hallelujah. So anyone who defies the temple of God, God will destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple we are. Praise the Lord. So when you get something, because we want to control the number of children, and you put it in your body like I, I, some women do, they use coils. Hallelujah. They put it in the, let's say they put it in the arm. The next thing is in the, is in the head. In, I mean, it's in the abdomen. The next thing is in somewhere in another part of the body. So it keeps on moving. Those things, they keep on moving. And they are affecting our body, they are defiling the temple of God. And it says, the, if anyone defies the temple of God, God will destroy. But then what should we do? Praise the Lord. Let's say I have a health issue. I cannot bear more than one child. I cannot bear three. I cannot bear four. What should be done and what should I do? Praise the Lord. To me, the, first, the, best, um, the best thing to do is to pray. Hallelujah. To pray to the Lord. Because I have a sister. She used, she used to use family planning. And God told her to stop using family planning. Hallelujah. Because when you go to the book of Jeremiah 32, verse 27, 
Hallelujah. Jeremiah 32, 27. Sister Sonia, Jeremiah 32, 27. Amen. Amen. That is Jeremiah 32, 27. We are looking at what can be the best thing to do. Okay, I read in Jesus' name. He said, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me to, for me? <laughs> Sorry. Amen. Is there anything too hard for the Lord? Is there anything he cannot do? First, he said, bring your case. God can do, can do everything, can do anything. If we have faith, hallelujah. If we say, Lord, this is the, this, I've had these children, this is enough. Praise the Lord. God can do anything. God can, is the God who shuts the womb, is the God who opens up the womb. Hallelujah. If we pray with faith, God can do it. If he's the one who opened the, the womb of Sarah, and is the one who opened the womb of, of, uh, of Anna, he can still open the womb, he can still shut the womb. So this is the when she prayed to the Lord, the Lord God shut her womb. Praise the Lord. She said, Lord, these children are enough. God shut her womb. So me, I believe with prayer, God can do anything. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Sister Rusty, can you say something about that? What should be done? What should women do about this issue? Praise the Lord. Amen. You have said it, my sister, because you need you need prayer you need to go to god because there's no there's no other way naturally that you can say i want to do because there are many who follow their calendars and it goes wrong by following it's not stable or whatever it is we have people who have their days which are not stable so they cannot concentrate on the calendar because this this month is this date this month then it confuses all the circle so for me, I believe what you have said that you need God, you need to go in prayer, and God can do it all. Amen. Amen. Sister Lovett, please give us your wisdom by the grace of the Holy Spirit. So, what should be done? What should women do? Another thing, what do you what do you do, my sister? What do you use? Hmm. Praise the hmm. Lord. The very good Amen. question. Um, how will I say? For me. I don't know. There's a way the Lord Himself has channeled my system. It's just Him. Um, I don't. When I was in the world, I was getting pregnant. Like, but since I got married and be born again and start to live my life, you know, it just come at the time that God wants it to. You understand? So, just like you said, I would say that. Let's give, let's just commit it to the hands of God. The Lord knows everything and he knows the right time that the children will come. And he knows when to close the womb. He has the power to close the womb. Just like um, Mommy Lucy said, there are times that you say, okay, I want to follow the circle. Sometimes you have 28 days. And before you know, it's turning to 32. Before you know, it's turning to 35. There's some people that is you are wondering how and so before you you can't even calculate it and and get it correctly and for that a woman can get pregnant so but if we completely surrender it to the lord and say god hi i've i've had enough children i feel i've had enough and i want you to help me according to your will because the bible says that when we pray according to his will because we might think that we have had enough and whereas God knows how many he wants for us. So he can say, okay, it's not yet time for you to stop and give because he knows that if he gives you more, he will bring the provision. But if he, he can also see and say, no, I think it is time and it will make it to stop. But just like you said, let's go to the Lord. He knows everything. The Lord knows every, the things we don't know. God knows. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Sister Vivian. Sister Vivian, what should women do? Men are, men are struggling out there. They are like 
okay, I can't take care of these children. Actually, they started calling them women students. Take away your children. You see, you had many children. Praise the Lord. It's just a very delicate <laughs> question. <laughs> just like what our sister said. It's just, like, it's just God that is helping us. Because sometimes you might make mistakes. <laughs> Before you know it, <laughs> the tummy will start shooting out. It's just God that is just helping us. Just like when I had my last child, so I was called. So when I when I, I I said I won't go, but my mind was like that I should just honor the invitation. I went to the hospital. So there was just like a family planning, you know, things like that. But to the glory of God, I went there. I said, okay, I'm going to speak my mind as a Christian, as a believer, as a child of God. I don't believe in family planning. I just told them I can't do it. I left. Even the paper that they gave to me that I should sign that they're going to put in you know, things that they say. I said no. I'm not cut out for this. So I just spoke my mind, and since then, God has been helping us. <laughs> so I just thank God. So it's just it's something that you just pray about it and ask God to help you. Because once it's there, you cannot abort it. So once you go into abortion, you say, see, you're clean a baby. So it's just God has been helping us. Since we said that we don't want any more. We are okay. I said, God, please help me because I know my body. My body is like, even if I drink water, <laughs> the, the baby will come. So it's just God that has been helping us. Praise the Lord. So just pray about it. Ask God to help you and direct you because sometimes we make mistakes. So it's just God. Amen. Amen. Uh, Sister Helen, please, we need your advice. What should we do? Praise the Lord. Amen. I think you have said it all. And we need to pray because um, for me, I used also the same family plans. But then when I found out it was not it was not good, uh, I prayed and I, I stopped it. So and sometimes you can be pregnant because maybe the Lord wants that child to be somebody. So so you even even you pray, then you get at that child. So we need to keep it because it, it has a its meaning for all children. They come because we all, all of us we have we have a plan for all of us. So that's why uh, I pray. So it helps me after after I started to pray. But before I use it, those family plans. So. We have said it all. I think we all need to pray and to ask the Lord for what we want. Amen. Amen. Okay. So there are some times when, let's say, the woman, she cannot have more children. You know, there's a time you reach an extent and it just stops by itself. And then the man, let's say you have three and the man wants to have five. So the man starts threatening, because I've had uh, some women with this complaint, like the man threatening her because she cannot have more children. The man wants more, the woman cannot. And then decided to say, okay, if you cannot have more children, I'm going to marry another one. I'm going to bring in another, or I'm going to go out with, you know, especially if they, they, are, they are not uh, genuine, you know, born again. Hallelujah, they are still struggling in this salvation journey. So what should the woman do in this case? Your husband is saying, you need to have, I want five. And for you, because of your body, you know yourself, maybe you have health, some health issues, you say, okay, I can, to have it, more children is to die. So what should be done? Sister Sufficient. Sister Sufficient. Yes, ma, what did you say? <laughs> okay, welcome back. All right, so I was saying, if uh, there's sometimes a woman, let's say a woman has some health issues, health conditions, and she cannot have more than three or more than two, but the man wants more. So the man says, if you can, it brings some confusion, it brings some disunity, and the man is like, if you cannot have more, then I'm leaving. 
So what should the woman do in this case? Okay, sorry if there's noise in my background. <laughs> oh, okay, in this case, just like you've been saying, prayer can go a long way. Like there are a lot of women that have gotten to menopause, like gotten to the age where they can't bear again, bear children again. That's one reason of it. Then there are women that have gone through operations probably three times. When you've gone through operations for like many times and you want to have children again, the doctor would like advise and say like you have previous scars of operations so you shouldn't go through again. But in a situation whereby the husband wants another children and he's not considering your health condition or the risk attached to it, you just like to pray, come to God and pray and cry to God. There's nothing God cannot do. And if God being willing, if he's in his will, he can open up your womb or actually remove the, what should I say? <laughs> to remove the um, condition. That's another way so that you can be able to bear children or actually pray to God to it. To Another way is to pray to God to like calm the mind of your husband or talk to your husband. If for adventure you, you don't want to bear any other child, talk to your husband or calm the mind of your husband. And I think that's my own suggestion. Amen. God bless you. Hallelujah. So, um, so there are sometimes a woman every month, every let's say every year she has a she 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 gets pregnant. Hallelujah. Like my mother used to get pregnant every every year. She'd give birth every year. Amen. So every year the child the children are like one one year old one year old one year old every year should give birth and this man is like okay if you're if you're like a, like this uh he used to call her like a rabbit you give birth like a rabbit hallelujah so we're not going to we're not going to live together anymore you must stop and you cannot stop because now we're looking at these other family planning methods they are evil before god Hallelujah. So what should a woman do? It is not her fault. It is her body. And God, you know, it's evil to use this family method, family planning method. But she's praying, but prayer, maybe sometimes it's taking long. So what should be done? Sister Odell. She's going. Okay, I'll, I'll throw this to Pastor Jeff. Pastor Jeff, what should we do? The man wants, the man, the woman is like, every, every year she gets pregnant. Uh, it is quite unfortunate that the woman is always the victim. It is always, because in this case, it is the man, remember the Genesis chapter 38 that you, we read from, it is the man who knew his wife. We heard again from Adam. It's not the wife coming to ask him. It is the man. So he cannot blame it. Because it, the way that um, constructed, there's a part that I was reading yesterday. I was just reading something very interesting where the Lord, where the Lord chased the, um, our father Adam from the garden. Where you are saying, you will be what your desire shall be for your husband. So in these matters, I think women have got very little to say. As much as they want to say, we can understand from the secular world why these women advocates are coming in, the activists. Because they say, we do this to say we're wrong. We want to do this. So what should we do now? So the most important thing is to understand that in most of these cases, the woman is on the receiving end. It's not a man who carries the pregnancy. Pregnancy comes with a lot of difficulties. Some women may even go to the extent of almost dying or they're risking their child to die. So when we always look at the woman in this case, it's a little bit different because some men, they don't have understanding. But if you have got a mother, if you are born of a woman, if you have got a sister, if you have got a wife, if you have got children of your own, then these are some of the things that you begin to understand. If men were to get pregnant for two hours, there will not be children in this world. Definitely. 
most especially African men, I'll just transgress. They really want children, yes. The next thing, even a heavily pregnant woman can go and make some food. This food does not have salt. The baby is crying. Ten minutes, go to your mother. It is a typical, and you hear most of them are even surgeons. Of course, pastors, I want to read my Bible. But what about the woman? She, the wife also wants to read the Bible. That's why at times you've got these um, disparities between uh, the strength in Christianity. Because if we are not there to support one another, it's like we are, we are now equally unyoked. We are, we are, we are like, uh, we are not at the same event, at the same, that doesn't sort of evening, at the like at the, at the, again? At the same evening, like evening. Um, at the, at, at the um, same level, sorry. At the same, at the, like, at the same level. Because this, the Dalus has the same German very well. She may not share, forgotten to speak a little bit, but. Mm. It comes and it goes. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is what I see. I do not want the women to be the victims. And also, the sad thing now is, the devil has stepped into what God wanted. This issue of um, sex, as is being defined now, everything has been sexualized in society. It was not meant to be so. When you see Adam, you spent six, seven years, of course they live longer. But now we said, no, people have been conditioned. They must meet as often as they can. And this is why people are now worshiping the false god of sex. They have replaced now the Lord. They don't know about it. It is even with the men of God, it's not different. It is the same thing. But those that are praying this, when they know when to meet with the leading of the Holy Spirit, because it's not a priority. It's not like it must. What people need is love. If somebody was paralyzed, what was going to do about it? I was talking to the Dallas, she was giving an example of somebody that we both know where the husband has been paralyzed for a long time. She never got to enjoy the husband. He's paralyzed from the waist down. So in that case, what can the woman do? If we say it's a must. So it's not a must. Everything that we are given, we must not take it for granted before the Lord. So I pray I pray, brethren, that when the Lord gives us this opportunity, is to reflect. The moment we feel denied, it is causing problems in the home. 95% of the problems comes now from there, of which it should not have been the case. So as much as we are planning, let that aspect of it be part of the family planning. Let it become, because if a man, that's when people begin to get even. We weaponize it now. I'm not going to touch it. I'm not going to do this. The woman said, now wait, is it not me? I'll meet you, you'll meet me. So now we have got these things now which lead to divorce in marriage. They still remain married, married, uh, married but they are still they are divorced, but they are divorced already because they have nothing in common because everything is being taken from the context. They say, it is a must. When it comes more, it must be driven more out of love, more in glorifying the Lord than to please the flesh. So this is one area where I see which is giving challenges before we even talk about family planning. Because before we talk about family planning, it means both husband and wife must meet. So if that area is not properly addressed, where people know it's about it's a continuation that God has allowed only in the context of the union of a man and a woman, which they call marriage. Anything outside that is a possession. Anything with another woman outside your marriage is still a possession. With another man is still a possession. So this is where we need to, especially men, are the greatest transgressors on this aspect.
So as men, we need to understand also that when you talk about gender mechanics, because we come, we want the woman to control that which we cannot control. We she cannot control the cycles, neither can you control yourself. So why should the woman be there to blame? A woman is always generally a receiving end. Because if I cannot control it, it means she can. And when you go and do this vasectomy, where man sterilization is no hundred percent that you will not have children again. This is demonic. This is evil. You are telling God, say no, you should have made me in such a way. All these things, but the only thing that is we look only as women as the greatest transgressors here, but they are not. They are only usually on the receiving end. There is nothing that they can do. I do not know whether I have touched one area that is very important. In this matter, women they end up trying to resort to these methods because many are not married to a godly husband. So they will not understand this thing. So the, it's like if you see a, a woman in holiness being asked out to leave a man's house, what are you going to do? So a woman is going to do something because the Bible says a wise woman built her own home. So no matter how much you try, that effort cannot be seen because people know that you were chased away from his home. It means you are not good enough. So it's the woman again, the victim, who is going taken as a, an aggressor. So when you talk, these are teachings that actually I would have preferred to teach men. Men need this particular teaching because they are the greatest transgressors. It is easy to say a woman died to give an abortion. Those children will be waiting for you tonight. You caused this woman to sin. You told her, say, if you get pregnant, I will marry you. Now she said to pregnant, you said, ah, uh-uh, you want the mama did to hear this thing. Now, all of a sudden, the woman that was said, I don't want her, I don't need to see my wife again. She comes into the picture now because I want her to protect me. I would go to my wife and say, Ah, I don't know this foolish woman. I don't know what she wants from me. Look at men. So, these are teachings. We know men, when they want what they want, they will come and say all the right things that you want to hear. But because you are greedy, because you want to please the flesh. These are the effects of trying to please the flesh. If you are in spirit, you just know that there must be this restraining power of the Holy Spirit. So it's not a, I don't know, I think it's my daughter who said that by my power, which was quoting Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6. It is not by my peace or by power. It's not of our own will, but that power of the Holy Spirit in John chapter 1, verse 12. The moment you agree, you, you submit to be a child of God, there must be that restraining power. There is no sin that comes unto us without our knowledge. God brings those issues to us and then it's, oh, I wanted to commit a sin. Oh, I was gossiping. Oh, I said something wrong about somebody. These things come immediately. If you've got the Spirit of God, you hear me, you go and apologize. Say me, the whole me. No, offer my head for So, I just want more of this teaching. Maybe we will do it when uh, we are going to have a couple's fellowship next month. That is where we are going to invite men so that men also learn. Because we cannot teach women, they hold their own side of the bargain. Now women are following those things. If the man is not following, what do, I, what do you expect me to do? It is like children of pastors, they drink beer, they smoke. Things that their parents don't do. You cannot hold the parents responsible. So men also want this teaching. Because it's one thing that they must know. When you say we are planning, are you prepared to wait two or three months? Oh, no, I wouldn't do it. I'll get another way. So these are the dangers that women will go through. So it's something that needs both parties. So that when we are trying to find a biblical solution, they must also be in the same knowledge, on the same understanding that the woman is caught. Because when you come in, you say, hey, remember, I am the father, I am the head. That's what you hear the men to say. So what is the woman going to do? Nothing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you. God bless you. Yeah, so uh, we're going to 
um, continue with this. It is uh, big, it is wide, so we need more contributions and we would like also to have a, a doctor in so he can give us some, you know, uh, medical areas. So, but there's sometimes, uh, there's sometimes a couple might decide not to have children of their own. And then you see them adopting children. So what is that then? What do we, I know, where do we put this? They say, okay, we're not going to have children. And then you see them adopting children. Pastor. Um, the, uh, the issue of adoption, the issue of adoption is not, you know, it depends on how people are looking at it. Like some, I think God is blessed me. There is a family that I know they cannot take care of their child or their two children or my brother. Some choose to do it within family. You go and take your nephews or your nieces. Remember when you say adopting, you can adopt your brother's kid. They become your daughter. They not become as my niece, my nephew. A mother or a father is a responsibility. The one who sees that the child is taken care of, is well taken, goes to school, that becomes the parent of that child. So, if you are doing it on a humanitarian basis, I think it's not wrong. If you, there are some that God will say, okay, um, we will bless it with. Um, well, we also need to have somebody we can take as our own. We don't have it times for uh, for me to become a father. I don't have to. I, I do not have to necessarily have a biological child. That is from the ability that I take care of somebody. You can be, you become a father. That's what a father is all about. That's what a mother is all about. To know that I'm going to cook for this child. I'm going to do this thing. That person becomes your child. So basically, it's not that element of saying, um, I'm adopted. Yeah, like I said, the adoption they could be on two parts. That there are some who said, ah, okay, we just want, there are people who naturally have children and they want to have children around. Said, okay. But some, because they don't have the revelation, they said, no, I want only my own biological children. But God probably is calling you to be a father to many that you're not even able to give birth to yourself. So if it is 20, you say, I want you to be a father or a mother to 20 children. So it depends. If it is the will of God, he will give us this um, the grace. So adoption in it, um, is it uh, um, the, servant, the man servant of um, Father Abraham? The one who has complained, he said, is he the one who's going to take my inheritance? said, no, you are going to get one that is coming from your loins. So I just want to say the issue of adoption, these are some, there are some things that are entirely personal. Biblically, there's nothing wrong if it's done with a good motive. Because God said if they have it, just the mind. So the motive of trying to adopt is not bad if it is to give somebody a new lease of life, to show that love that God is blessed me. I want to raise somebody up. I want to raise a daughter. I want to raise some daughters. Like, I don't have a girl child. I just want some daughters in the house. Coming, ah, these girls, they come in. Oh, what should you make me? What should you do this? All these things, they can come in like that. So it is not, it's, the Bible does not talk against it. It's just individual choices. It just is led by the Spirit of God, but it also depends with the other party because the one person cannot decide. I cannot decide I'm going to bring a daughter here. My wife said, You go to work, right? Say yes. You spend 12, 13 hours in, not at home, said yes. Who is going to look after you? So those are challenges. Unless those things are done in agreement, then it's okay. But uh, definitely, we will invite Dr. Henry so that he. You come. There are some questions that I wanted to ask him for the benefit of our viewers, but I think by the grace of God, we hope that he will come and be able to answer, especially that aspect from the medicine side, because he can marry the two medicine and Bible, so that we see what how should be what should be done 
and even those that have gone into menopause. Amen. Amen. Um, First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. Let no one deceive himself. If anyone among you seems to be wise in this age, let him become a fool, that he may become wise. 819. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God, for it is written, he catches the wise in their own craftiness. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise that they are fatal. Therefore, let no one boast in men, for all things are yours. Praise the Lord. So there's a lot of times we just ask, instead of asking God or inquiring from God, we go to the worldly, the world. We go and get the, you know, we ask the world. You see your neighbor or someone even, they don't, they don't care about godly things. Then we go, okay, what should I do? I want to have, you know, this ma amount of this number of children. What should I do? But the, the wisdom these people are going to give us might be wrong. And then we might end up, you know, uh, sinning against God. So I think everything we do, because God knows our thoughts, God knows um, our motives, God knows everything. So whatever we do, he already knows. What are, why are we doing it? What is the reason behind it? Praise the Lord. So let's say I have, okay, I can say, okay, me, I don't want to have children. Or me, I, why am I doing it? What is the reason? What is the purpose of doing that? So everything we do, we must allow the Spirit of God to lead us and to guide us so that we don't do things according to our own wisdom because that the wisdom of men are foolish. That God knows that the wisdom of men are future. Praise the Lord. So uh, we have to allow the Lord to guide us in all things, to teach us in all things. Praise the Lord. So we don't end up regretting. If it is uh, to space children, the Lord can do it. If we are to add more children, the Lord can do it. So let us not use our own wisdom, but we allow the Spirit of God to teach us and to guide us in everything we do. Praise the Lord. If there is any other contribution, the floor is open. And then I will, I will uh, take it back to Sister Shimoye. Okay, praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you for the purpose of probably the viewers out there. The truth is that concerning this uh, family planning, people that are doing it as in, how should I say, the people that work there, I've worked, I'm a medical student, I used to go, okay, I'm a medical student, when I was in school, I worked in family planning in the hospital, I was posted to these women, obstetrics and gynecology, so I worked in, in uh, family planning for some months there. And I realized that someone can come into the family planning this thing without probably just to make inquiries. And we end up convincing you. In the next day or two, three days, we are back to the this in hospital to get what? Implantation, be it uh, the implantation, the injectables or whatsoever they are going to insert into you. The truth is that when you go there as someone that if you know the knowledge of what the word of God says, you have to be prepared probably if you are just going for checkup and every other thing and they refer you to family planning, just like Sister Vivian said, you have to like stand your ground. Because for instance now, for the uh, uh, combined oral contraceptive, just like the pills, they will tell you, be like, oh, I'm a Christian, I don't do this, all these things are not wrong. And we are going to tell you, let, let me not include myself with, because I don't believe it in me again. And they are going to tell you that this, this is just a drug. Don't you take normal drugs? Don't you take prostomol? You'll be like, ah, yeah, I do take drugs. And they tell you, okay, this one is not injectable or we are not implanting anything in your body, or we are not doing tuba uh, ligation, we are not doing vasectomy or whatsoever. They will just say it's just drugs. And when you take these drugs, what the drug does is it will just alter every your reproductive system in the sense that the, the eggs, when the eggs are supposed to be released, it will not be released. It will prevent the release of the egg at when it's supposed to be released. Then it will not take in your cervical mucus in such a way that if you have intercourse, the sperm will not be able to swim through. And another thing, it will also take in the lining of your uterus in such a way that if the eggs have been fertilized, it will not be able to implant. All these things happen and it will just alter. And the truth is that if you look at it in God's own standard, we are not meant to tamper with what God has created, just like in certain things, no, this is not the way I want, I, I want it. And the truth is that I myself, I even convinced one of my classmates then, he's 
he, his wife is just like having birthday and he's just a student like me. And we just hear my wife was giving them. I was like, brother, you have to do family planning. So the other day I just called him. I was like, wait, how about that your wife? Did you do that family planning? He was like, yes, so she did. I was like, oh, forgive me. See, I didn't want it to do it. I started explaining. I don't believe in family planning. If you want to, if you want to space your children, you have to pray to God. God will help you. Myself, I'm not going to do it. He was like, yeah, yeah, I don't hear. But the truth is that his wife has been implanted. There's an implant already in the hand. Uh, the wife has already gotten an implant. I was like, please, you have to go and remove it. It's not by Blake and all of that. I pray that God will help us and we should just be wise. Because if you go there, they will convince you. They will try to use logic. They will try to tell you this one is drug. This is not injectable. This one is not an intra try device. All those things. I just pray that the Lord will help us. All that thing. Praise the Lord. Can I say something for that sure. contribution? Sure. Uh, for those, for example, those of us who have girl children in Europe, for example, if we are not very careful, doctors, they are in for it because the moment a child reaches of that time that she starts her days, you know, they have their children, their people who have a lot of pain and they overflow. It has a long flow and too much. So like for my daughter, when she was 15 years, she had, she could not even wake up. She could stay in bed for like a week and it was flowing too much. So she decided to tell mama, we go to the doctor and say, but I was already born again, thank God. So I took her to the doctor and this doctor is also born again, doctor. We were in the same church. So I went to him and he, I explained the, the problem. I said, what can we help her? And the doctor said, you know, Lucy, she has to take some pills. I said, what? I said, doctor, what are you telling me? Yes, yes, because that will help her now. The, the flow will come on control. It will be under control. Now she will not have many pain. I say, no, at all. I refused. I refused his, his order completely. And he looked at me and said, what do you mean? I said, you are a Christian. What are you telling me? I say, you are, you are even a pastor. What, what are you going to say? I'm not going to allow it. But he's my house doctor. So he thought, actually, he looked at me as I was a crazy woman, by the way. He said, why I'm letting my daughter to go to... I say, me, I passed through that. I never went to any doctor for pills. So why should she do it? She can take Panadols and she has, yeah, you know. But now, since I refuse, because when you allow children to take that, they'll take it also as an advantage. They will start like in Europe, children are so free. They want to, 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 to access, to instrument, to, to do experiments and everything. And then what happens? Something can come up or it will bring another sickness on top of another sickness. And uh, for me, I refused because I said, no, it cannot work. So she's, she's only 15 years. Why, what? Why, why are you doing that? You see, they start giving children pills as young as 12. So I was just trying to add on what Sister Sufficient was saying. We have to be very careful when, the, when you're, you're going with a girl to the doctor, please follow up and know what it is about. But about that, it's better take Panadol for painkillers because it's only for a short time when it goes away. <laughs> Amen. God bless you. Amen. Praise the Any Lord. Other contribution? Amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord. I would like Amen. to add on um, the adoption issue. Um, I, I, your question was, what if two people decide not to have children and then they go to adopt? Is that it? Yes. yes. Two people decide as children of God. We cannot wake up and decide to say, I don't want to have children. Because if you say, I don't like, you are married, what is stopping you? It's not that maybe um, you are trying and you are, not get, you are not getting pregnant. But you can give birth. Now, because I know this is the system of the world. Um, for some reasons, they don't want to have children because maybe the woman says, oh, I want to keep my shape intact. And for that, I don't want to have children. So they can, she can agree with her husband to say, let's not have children, let's adopt. And this is so common in the Western world. But we children of God, 
that is not in a plan because it's not the plan of God. Yes, you can adopt just like Pastor Jeff said, but if you are adopting because you don't want to have children, then it is not of God. God has given you fertility. Your husband also is fertile. So what is stopping you? So for you to take the second option of adoption, it should be that because you have tried and you cannot have, or you have children and you just saw somebody who you want to help and then you go to hell. But to say, as a believer, as a child of God, I say, no, we are, me and my husband, we have decided not to have children. And so because of that, we want to adopt. I don't think it's according to the plan of God for us. So that is a no-go. Praise the Lord. Sister Helen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Yeah, I want to also to contribute about that. Uh, uh, two parents decide not to have children. Um, I have one woman I know with her husband. Uh, I think like I've, like I've said before, is every one of us has a meaning why the Lord brings us here. Um, there's some, like in the case I, we are talking about here, there's these parents, they did, decided not to have children, but instead for, they went and adopt uh, disability children, two children. And these children, one of them uh, was from China. Um, they find that child in the in the a road. Uh, so, in one or another hand, the Lord wants to lift these children. Maybe he just, you know, sometimes we do things we don't know what we are doing, but the Lord is he, He's in charge. Just He make them adopt these two children. And they have these two children, and they adopt own disability children. And then after, after some years, so they get a, a, a baby number three, their own. So I think the Lord wants sometimes to show that these children, uh, we throw them out, we don't like them all because they have problem or not and what. So he wanted to lift them to feel like they are, they are loved. Praise the Lord. Amen. Any other contribution? Amen. Sister Shimwanya. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. I will contribute and we, we give God the glory. It's a beautiful section, you know. We give God the glory. Thank you, woman of God. Thank you for this subjects is a very deep one and by God's grace the Lord will help us all to learn. God will prepare us. This session is for every I think everyone needs this, even though married. So you get guided, get information and get prepared because the man has been drawn and there is fight. The scripture you gave us here, God bless you my sister. He said the wisdom let no man deceive if a man if any man among you seem to be wise in his world, let him become a fool. That he may be for the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God, for it is written, He take the wise in their own craftiness. craftiness. The next line, I, I, I'm so marveled, and again, the Lord know what the thoughts of the world as they are vain. Amen. They are vain. Amen. They knew what order, amen. They have a stone here, a monument they have here in Georgia, United States of America. You've traveled down here in Georgia. It's erected. They have their Ten Commandments. At the top of this Ten Commandments, the first one they have, in, it's written in ten good languages. So anyone can read. The first one, what they have is maintain humanity under 500 million in perpetual balance with nature. The second one, guide reproduction wisely. That word is coded. Guide it wisely, reproduction. So if you're going to them to see for fertility and every can, that's why see, see, let's see what our sister said. Sister that have been there, sister sufficient that have worked there. So this is this, this is coming to us, Lord. The Lord is helping, pulling us, separating us that we will not be like them. Amen. Is their plan to shut down this this whole deal? Their plan is to call them whatever is against the Lord hate. They want to stand against it. They oppose God. Amen. God bless you, Mama Lucy, for that contribution. We should be at it. We should start early to aim 
indoctrinate our children, teach them before they get them. As young as they are, they want to get them. May the Lord help and strengthen us and give us the grace, amen, that we will not fall to their lies, we will not fall to their wicked plan. The Lord will separate us. This is it. This is a Satan know that he can't get up, but by forcing us to sin against God, the curse of God will follow. Just like Balaam, he, he caused the children, he gave the counsel for Balaam, for the children of God to sin against God so that they will sin. Amen. Revelation yet for them to sin, sin against God. This is a wickedness again. How woman of how woman fights with contend with his maker. May the Lord help us. God bless you, my sister. God bless you. We're gonna pray for our sister. The Lord have used even this moment. I don't know, Pastor Jeff, do you have anything to contribute? I'm gonna go ahead and round up. No, thank you. Okay, sir. God bless you so much, sir. Amen. Amen. Let's just begin to pray. Well, let's begin to thank God for our sister. Thank God for this moment. Father, we thank you for this session. Thank you for bringing this to our knowledge. Father, we give you praises. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We give you all the adoration. Thank you for your daughter whom you have used, oh God. Father, we worship you. Thank you for making her available, oh God, in your house. Oh God, thank you for the grace, oh God. Thank you for the subject we have here. Father, Lord Jehovah, indeed, your word, oh God. Father, Lord God, enlightens our eyes. Father, oh Lord God, we thank you. We glorify you for your daughter. Be honored, be reverenced in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We pray with thanksgiving. Amen. We are going to pray for the woman of God. Amen. <laughs> Let's pray for her. That the Lord should give her more wisdom. Let her stay in tune to the word of God. Let the Lord give her the light. Let God give her wisdom. Let God strengthen her more wisdom that she will win her generation for Christ. Father, we pray for your daughter Jehovah and strengthen her, empower her, ever that she will win her generation for you. Father, she will teach the word rightly, dividing the word, but that all will learn and grow in wisdom. Father, that we will know there is no, oh God, Jehovah, blindness. Father, Lord God, with us, oh God, your children. Father, our eyes will be open, but we are able to see the craftiness of the wicked one. We will not follow the wicked one in his foolish ways. Father, will say, give her over the grace. Give her, Father, that she will stay in tune to you at all time in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus Christ's mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen. We are going to pray for her again. Let the anointing of the Lord, anointing to teach, let it never run dry. Let God release more anointing upon her. Amen. They let the ointment run down. Amen. Let the God give her more wisdom in the dream, in visions. Let God teach her, guide her, direct her, give her answers to questions that will come to her, personal questions that will come. People that will let God give her the right guidance, the right, all of, the right counsel that she can give to people and they, they will be ready for rapture, they will be they will be in right standing with the word of God. Father, we pray for your daughter, talk her anointing, give her grace, give her wisdom, Jehovah, that she will give right can, right counsel to your children, that they will not err against you, they will not sin against you. Father, this is our cry here and answer all sessions of this in Jesus Christ's mighty name. We pray with thanksgiving. Amen. This is a very serious topic again, just like Sister Lucy mentioned. Amen. As soon as bam, you went there, they are getting they are trapped, they are ready, they are ready. The doctors, they are out and about. It. They want to get this is a very serious topic. We're gonna to pray for any power that will come to retaliate, attack, and frustrate any power, any demon, for this of darkness that will come after our sister to silence her, to torment her for exposing their wickedness, bringing this topic. Let the thunder fire of the lingo struck them. Begin to pray for sister Lenya. Begin to pray, pray for her. Let the Almighty God fight every power, every ugly head that will raise against her. Father, we pray for your daughter, every ugly head that will raise against her. Father, may you silence by your power, by your mercy. Jehovah King of Glory, guard and protect her, shelter her, Jehovah. Let no voice over silence her. Jehovah, fight every power that will rise, contend with them, silence them, paralyze them by your power, by your mercy, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus Christ's mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God, the Lord strengthen you. Amen. The Lord make you, the Lord have planted you in his house and you shall do his work. No power can stop you. We are going to pray for ourselves. Amen. Amen. Blessed be the holiness. We are the holy people. We are strong. We are pursuing with an arrow up. We are pursuing holiness. We're going to do three prayers for us. Amen. We are pursuing holiness in everything. We want to be holy. Amen. We want to be blameless before the Lord. We are going to pray for ourselves. Amen. We're going to say, Father, Lord, God, help us. Satan has proposed holiness and family planning. He won't, this is like if you escape in this way. You can't escape this. If you're able not to do this, he wants something to hold us, just like Balaam, to cause us that we will sin. Then the wrath of God will fall upon us. We are going to cry out to the Lord. Father, whatever be our situation, let's begin to cry. Father, Lord Jehovah, thou art the Almighty, thou art the righteous God, thou art a 
claim God. The Lord is holy. The Lord is holy in all that he does. He is the one that knows the best for us. He has made us and not we ourselves. We have no knowledge on our own. He has pre pro programmed our body in the way it is. Father, we cry out to you, Almighty. Mm -hmm. May you, oh God, take control of our situation. If you have someone you want to pray for, pray for them that the Lord should take control of their situation. People that are crying, they are in so much pain that they want, they want to stop bearing. There's no money. They have a lot of things, many reasons to complain. We let's cry out to the Lord that the Lord should help them. Let God touch their body. Let God do the planning for them. Let God give them, oh God, the, the, the resource to take care of the one that has. And the Lord should speak to their body in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's lift up our voices. Pray for someone. Pray, 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 pray. Pray for the Lord. Pray for the Lord. We pray for people that are seeking for ways ready to stop. Father, we pray, Lord God, may you, oh God, Jehovah, Lord God, help them. Or speak to their body. You are the God of creation. Because you are the Lord, the God of all flesh, there is nothing too difficult for you. There is nothing too hard for you. Father, speak to the bodies of your children in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus Christ's mighty name, we pray. Amen. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain grace. We're going to pray for someone, anyone you know that have committed abortion because they have, they don't want to have that children. They have taken a wrong counsel. Anyone you know that have done anything contra, anyone you know that have taken the, the contraception, anyone that you know that have done, this is a wickedness. See the word of the Lord. The wrath of therefore, the wrath of God will fall upon the children of disobedience. If you offer him, he anyone that defies the temple of God, him will God destroy. Let us begin to pray that the Lord will forgive and have mercy. Anyone you know that have sinned against this is a very, very serious. You know, the anger of the Almighty, when it leashed out, it will go like a blazing fire. It is going to keep up and sin. Father, we cry to you, Lord Jehovah. Father, I bring your daughter before you forgive her out of, oh God, frustration. Forgive her, oh God, Jehovah, for that sin. Father, it's a wickedness against you. Forgive her, Lord. Lord, I pray, oh God, that you speak to her body by your power, by your mercy. Let it cease by your grace. Your Lord, 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 we cry out to you. Let the blood, oh God, oh God, Father, Lord, let it wash away, oh God, the blood that was shed. Wash away, Father, for forgive and cleanse. Be merciful unto your daughter, Lord Jehovah. May you, oh God, Jehovah, Lord, Lord, give her the wisdom. May you not speak to her body that the I declare. declare. Let her body respond, oh God, to the glory of your name. Father, that, oh Lord, she, Father, she and her husband will not fall into this sin anymore by your power, by your mercy, and the might of Jesus. Forgive and be merciful, O oh Lord. Forgive and be merciful, O oh God. Be gracious, O oh God. Forgive, my Father, my friend. May you rise, O oh God, and show, Father, Lord God, that you are God Almighty. Speak, O oh God. And it's, Father, Lord God, their body will be still in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. In Jesus Christ, mighty name, we pray. Amen. 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 Let's pray. Amen. We're going to pray for our children. Amen. The last prayer. We're going to pray for our children that the Lord should cover them, protect them. They, they cannot catch them. Our children is set apart. If you don't, if you don't even have to pray for your child now. Pray for the godly children. They cannot deceive them. Our sister, praise the Lord. Our sister gave the revel, gave uh, 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 her daughter had a revelation and she gave it. The teacher, as they returned to school, a teacher was telling them that she's ready to marry. And she, she coded it. She knew it that what they said is deeper. She didn't go explain, but I know the spirit of the Lord gave us understand. We are able to understand. The teacher said that now that she she is ready to marry, that the small these are we're talking about small a child that is not even up to two, fifth, not up to ten years, twelve years. I don't know that there she's ready. That it's time to get married. She cannot get married. What will the child get married? That is coded in that revelation. The Lord gave to her. That I rejected it. I know. That I rejected it and told mom. Mom prayed and canceled that. This means Satan wants to introduce them to this abomination, the wickedness, and the ways of the world. Let's begin to pray for our children. Anything they want to program, anything they want to teach, any knowledge they want to inculcate in them, we cancel it by the power in the name of Jesus. Then we bring that children before your apple throne of grace. Any wisdom, any knowledge of the world, Satan wants to say, that we know how we cancel our children from not giving to their life. But we Silence the evil tongue of the Lord. In Jesus Christ's mighty name, we pray. Amen. Holiness unto the Lord. 
is a what what a song holiness unto the lord holiness unto the lord holiness unto the lord is a watch word and song heavenly father we thank you lord jehovah you have called us unto holiness father we will walk in holiness and righteousness and then we thank you for this oh discussion thank you abba father we worship and exalt your name let it commit oh god jehovah lord god all of us into your mighty hand give us grace help us to stand firm father help us to rebuke sin help us not to give in to the lies to the foolishness of this dying generation this evil generation of vipers father give us grace to stand against their evil counsel in the mighty name of jesus christ father lord mm-hmm. cover us keep us oh god protected and sheltered oh god yes, so all the coming with the blood of jesus keep us our children cover and protect us father lord god, let your mercy let your grace rest upon us let your angel encamp around about us thank you father for prayer answered for you and answered our prayers for in jesus christ's mighty name we pray with thanksgiving amen Amen. Let's share the grace and fellowship, please. Thank you, Chris. Grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest, remain, and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. God's goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our lives. We shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. A few seconds of silence before our Redeemer. Amen. 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 God bless you so much. God bless you. Shalom, everyone. Shalom. 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 Shalom.